20 minutes, but um, let's move on. So my name is uh, Philip Schottmann, and I cover the uh, HPC and uh, POD uh, sales for EMEA. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, POD is our integrated uh, um, well containers offerings. And uh, I will shortly reflect on what these containers are going to bring to our customers. So that's one of the nice things. So where are we heading uh, right now at uh, HP? Uh, for those of you who didn't know, we have restructured um, one part at least of HP to make sure that we would be aligning our uh, business units to support better two main topics which are basically serving the service providers and the HPC business. So today we are very happy that we have one integrated business unit and that's called hyperscale business unit. And in this business unit at HP, we integrate the engineering, the marketing and the sales support for all the products that we have dedicated to service providers and HPC. And this is raising obviously a lot of challenges. You might claim that we don't have the same products serving service providers and HPC. However, there are similarities and we will check that later on. We know that hyperscale for us, it's really about time. Our largest customers right now, they want to make sure that they have time, shorter time to uh, develop their products. And that's an obvious pick. All of them want to do that. A second thing which is uh, very important is to reduce cost. To reduce cost, you can check on many different topics, obviously. But today, I will make sure that I also cover one particular aspect, which is human costs. And so that is one of the points that we want to put in our equation at HP that we take into account. But let's move on. Again, quality, and I will come back to that, uh, response to change and competitiveness are the, the, the topics that we want to move forward on. Let's make sure that you understand that HP within the last 100 days, so within the last three months, has made three major announcements. I will, and I will shortly touch upon two of them because the one in the middle project, Odyssey, is really about our BCS offering. So that's our massive, large uh, servers. Um, but the two important ones are project Moonshot on the left, which is uh, focusing on extreme low energy computing. And obviously, we might see some cases where HPC customers are interested into looking at that. And I will shortly touch upon that. And the last one on the right, which is Project Voyager. So some of you has, have been seeing announcement in the last few days about our Gen 8 servers. And we will see how this uh, Gen 8 servers contribute to developing something which is the ex uh, redefining the expectations of economics for data centers. This includes a whole number of initiatives. Let's first have a look at the project Moonshot and what it is really. So this is how we approach. We cannot make, or I certainly cannot make a statement that we are talking today of a product it is not a product. It is a project that is going to take us on a many years road that will allow us to implement progressively our strategy in terms of extreme low power computing for our most demanding customers. So what it is really is that we have for the time being a development platform which is called Redstone, which is available today. This platform today is hosting uh, ARM processors, uh, but it will be most likely supporting a lot of other um, platforms, right, from other vendors, including Intel, including, including other vendors. We also now are implementing the HP Discovery Lab, and that is the way for you to make sure that you get involved with HP, with our labs, and with our engineering, to make sure that you can develop port, implement your own codes or your own initiatives on those platforms. And this is one of the important things that is taking place is that we do not see this platform right now as a product, I told you, but we already allow you to implement and to work with us on your applications and making sure that you can develop something which, is, which has sense, which is meaningful to you. The last one on the right, and that's the Pathfinder, program is really meant at all our ISVs. 
So the ISVs are given opportunity to develop or to port their code on those platforms and make sure that we can implement steadily in a safe environment, controlled environment, supported environment, their applications on those extremely low power computing platforms. So what is this platform? The Redstone platform, that's the first, how would I say? It's, it's the first of its kind, I, I would say. We are the first big vendor, by the way, to announce such uh, an initiative. This box here is a 4U box. It contains four chassis, like this one, Redstone. And this and each serv uh, platform here includes 72 servers. Okay, so you can quickly imagine or make the math. So that makes that you have about 288 server per 4U box. 288 servers per 4U box. If you multiply it by 10 to fill a rack, you are above 2,500 servers per rack. And that for the same power and even less power consumption than what you traditionally have with others. So that's pretty impressive in terms of possibilities. You may claim that this is not the highest performing um, CPUs, that, that they do not support floating point units, that they do not have the capabilities to do everything you do on your usual, uh, on your usual x86 servers or even GPU servers. However, I think that this is interesting in many, re in many respects. The first is that, as I told you, this is only the first platform. It's going to be followed by many other platforms. Okay. The second is, even with this platform today, which is ARM powered, you may see benefits for some HPC applications. So if you look at, at some uh, life science, so genome sequencing will, will immensely benefit of that, of that kind of architecture. If you look at um, dark agencies, encryption, decryption, all the kind of activities that are taking place in security agencies, it might make, uh, it might make a, a lot of sense. So we see that we have now plenty of customers that are willing to invest time with us to spend uh, more time understanding what this kind of new architecture is likely to propose to their customers. So I guess this is interesting. I'm not going to cover in details uh, what is there. I guess what you must keep in mind is that this is an, is an initiative that is just starting. As soon as we have the European lab opened, in the previous slide I told you that the labs are going to open by the end of this semester. The end of this semester will be only the American lab that will open. The first European lab, where you will be able to get involved with us, with HP, will open by the end of this year. Okay, so that means that most probably it will be it will be in November, December time frame that we have that. In any case, we are starting the discussions right now. Many customers are approaching us and we know that this is something where we have something that needs to be pushed forward. Any questions on, on Moonshot and this extreme low power uh, computing initiative? Don't hesitate. I mean, we know that this is a little bit shaking the grounds, right? So. I will be there, by the way, the rest of the, of the event. Let's now move on to uh, Project Voyager. And this is really the, the, the first uh, of, its, of its manifestations is uh, the Gen 8 announcement that we have uh, had recently. And this is redefining the expectations of economics uh, for data centers. So this is the current uh, product family that we have for HPC. So here you may see uh, rack mount servers, uh, the traditional Blade ProLine BL family, and the SL family, uh, which many HPC customers are adopting right now. And I will spend some more time, by the way, on the SL family, because really this is also allowing quite a number of changes within the traditional uh, HPC architectures. And I was very happy to see that one. So I was so happy to see the, the Gartner uh, statement after we made the announcement. So just have a look at that. I love to be on that, on that area. Yeah. So that's completeness of vision plus uh, ability to execute. And so if, if you look at that, I mean, it's a great time to be at, at HP right now. And, and the market shows, right? So we have a lot, a lot of adoption of those technologies, not simply um, because we are providing nice hardware, obviously, but, but because we are able to integrate it and run it in a very nice fashion. So I could not, I could not, 
I could not stand it. I had to show this one. Sorry for that. It seems like it's uh, it's uh, too much. Um, this is the uh, this is the uh, SL. Uh, product lines. So uh, here in this architecture, what you will see is that we support uh, well, obviously uh, the, uh, the 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 our servers. Uh, these are the two servers that we uh, just announced here: the 230 and the 250 Gen 8. Uh, so this is the 4U enclosure that we are using, and obviously we are playing with NVIDIA Tesla GPUs, and we obviously integrate very nicely with Mellanox, not only on the FDR side, but also on the rest of the uh, of the uh, offering. So this is the kind of thing that we are very proudly um, providing to the market. Uh, there are plenty of, of deals which are being cut uh, currently with this architecture. Let's see some of the features that we are providing. So what we see is that we have built um, an architecture which is a balanced HPC and GPU uh, architecture. And I see the, the, the friends from, uh, from NVIDIA there. So we know that we are working extremely well. And uh, this is one of the things that uh, you may know that HP is providing right now. We have a single box, a single 4U box, half width, which is using eight GPUs in a single enclosure. So this is the kind of things that, that is unique to the market. It's still a Gen 8. Uh, Gen 7, sorry, uh, version, but the Gen 8 is coming very soon. Um, obviously, we have uh, worked a lot on the I.O. performance for uh, Gen 8, and the fact that we now uh, support uh, PCI Gen 3 is also helping a lot. Uh, a lot. Let's now move on to each of the service capabilities. So the, the SL230, that's the uh, one new half-width uh, box that uh, we have optimized for HPC. It has um, uh, one integrated GPU or IO accelerator. So if people are interested by playing with things like Fusion, Fusion IO, or if you want to have some, we also have some customers which are asking us to integrate uh, RAIDs and a uh, high number of internal disks. This is also the kind of things that we are very happily uh, engaging on. So this is um, a very nice uh, feature that we have there, GPU, Fusion I.O. or high number of uh, rate protected uh, internal disks. Um, we have the flexible LAM feature, and that's uh, a very good thing, is that we now have uh, onboard uh, flex LAM uh, InfiniBand for, uh, uh, from uh, Melanox in FDR, and we have obviously a lot of density and efficiency there. Um, to us, the biggest win that we are doing right now is really on the management of this box. And so we have now things like uh, inside control, uh, which allows you to have plenty of additional features. And I will come back on that in uh, a later uh, slide, just to make sure that you understand where HP is playing right now and why we want to push for a better integrated environment. 2.30 is the 2U version of this box, and basically it is the same motherboard, but it, it integrates uh, up to three GPUs, okay? And we're also working on some customers to implement uh, Fusion I.O. or SSD-based uh, storage. So these are the kind of things that uh, we're also implementing right now. Now, what is making the life of our customers uh, really easy these days by choosing those platforms. If you look at that, it is an integrated lifecycle automation which we are providing. So we now have uh, an agent-less management, so that means that you do not have any overhead on the CPU for the agent that is monitoring everything. So the ILO4 is a completely separate um, processor in the machine and does not have any impact whatsoever on the CPU workload. So that's uh, something which is, which is pretty new. Um, on the dynamic workload acceleration, uh, this can be um, controlled or monitored uh, remotely, and we have all the tools now that are necessary to allow us uh, to use the uh, SSD optimization my PCI Gen 3 based uh, smart area controllers. So this is quite nice. You don't have to worry about that anymore. At the end of the day, you c looking at those, at those features that we have there, what really matters is I started my talk by telling you that we are working on the TCO. 
And if you look at uh, a tra traditional HPC uh, center, about, depending on the, on the site, 30 to 45% of the costs are human costs. We know that. That is, that is a given, okay? What we are trying to do by implementing things that are as integrated as what we are showing today is really make sure that we decrease the human costs necessary to run the servers. So this is how we have now delivered all those Gen 8 or next generation um, SL servers. The same is applying, by the way, for our, for our Gen 8 Blade servers. The same is applying also for our Gen 8 Rack Mount servers. Okay. Now, still talking about um, costs. Cost requires uh, integration. And at HP, I guess this is one of the things that our customers recognize at HP, is that we are pretty good at providing systems which are readily usable, which are pre-integrated, pre-tested, and that are easy to use and operate. And I guess this is what a majority of our customers um, recognize. I may not say that that this crowd, I guess, today does not have a lot of industry customers or non-academic uh, customers. If you look at the academic, uh, academic customers, we have less uh, of this stress. However, if you look at the non-academic sector, we know that all our customers have only one thing in their mind. They want to be quicker to the market. And to do that, you need to provide the tools, you need to provide the hardware and the services that are required to do that. And we at HP right now, I guess, are in the leading position to provide this kind of pre-integrated, pre-tested solutions. So here you can see that we have the innovation on the server side. So these are the two, DSL 230, 200s. I did not focus a lot on the storage, but we obviously have our storage solution and we also partner with external suppliers. On the partnerships, we have partnerships on the GPUs, on the InfiniBand. What we know also is that we are extremely good at integrating at rack level. So we have our own integrated water-cooled uh, racks. The pod that I mentioned, and that's the container, which is going to run the, the entire HPC uh, environment. And I will show uh, an example of one successful pod implementation. And after that, it's about software and expertise. And uh, I don't know whether you know about our integration capabilities, and I see some people smiling in the room, that I think we are pretty good. In, in some cases, we are damn good at providing um, whatever has been ordered by the customer and take any action in, can, in case of a remedy of corrective actions uh, to make sure that the cluster is delivered on time uh, and, and readily operatable. Now, let me take um, a short example. And I mean, that's one of our flagship um, systems, and that's the Airbus. I guess it is still the largest uh, manufacturing HPC site on the top 500. If, 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 it's, if it's not the first, it must be the, the second. The, the basic principle is very simple. I am Airbus. I'm building aircrafts. I don't want to care about IT. The only thing that I want is an HPC service. Is anyone able to provide me an HPC service? I do not want to own the data center. I do not want to own the IT. I want to pay a lease. Okay? So that is what we've done. In fact, we see an increasing number, and IDC shows that, we see an increasing number of, um, of uh, cloud-based, right? Really, it's private cloud HPC, whether in-house or whether externalized. This is right between the two, because if you see the pods, they are just on a parking lot nearby the Toulouse and uh, Hamburg um, factories at Airbus. So these pods have been coming pre-integrated, completely filled with IT. And in a matter of two days, um, that was the last one that we delivered, in a matter of two days, it was up and running. Everything is not so, so easy. I mean, you must provide power, you must provide UPS, you must provide cool, cool water, you must provide all of those. However, what HP has done is that we are providing the power we are buying it from the French electricity provider, we as HP. So we buy the power from EDF and we resell it, by the way, at cheaper price than what Airbus was doing before. We are reselling on a lease agreement to Airbus. 
So HP is able, and, and that, I guess, is a pretty good example of where HPC in some cases is heading for. We just want another one, typical example, it's, and that was, I guess it was about 10 million, a 10 million deal for four years, uh, really service-led HPC uh, system, and that was in the Middle East. We just sell, and actually the, the value of the hardware is not negligible but it's a very small part of the overall component of those systems. So that I wanted to make sure that you understand that this is also another way of looking at, at HPC these days. We see a lot more industrial customers, so non-academic customers, going or moving into that direction of things which are not theirs. They just want to buy HPC as a service and use it for their engineering time and develop their products as per a contract that they have signed with a supplier like HP. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Concerning the data privacy. The question was about uh, data privacy and data security. And most of the times, most of the times, we are talking of private clouds. So that means that we are operating a system like Airbus as if it were an, an Airbus site. No one else can get access to that system. It's a private cloud system. And that's where I think most of the customers are coming from, and that's where they are going also. So most of the offerings on which we are working right now are on the same, on the same lines. The only thing that it solves, really, is the fact that, yet again, it's not theirs anymore. I mean, it's, it's like if, if you were a large organization and said, uh, I want to build a car. Well, I, the only thing that I want is, is running it. Okay, so that's not that's not the point. Yeah, too. So the containers are going to be replaced. It's very interesting. So uh, a container really uh, physically is replaced, you know, in a day. Okay, but it requires some work before and some work after. But but physically, that's the value. Uh, we we love we love to to see that as a Lego, right? It's it's a piece of Lego, really. It's a large Lego, but it's a piece of Lego, and that's exactly what we are trying to sell to Airbus these days. Is that we are changing the next set of of well, the old Legos by by new Legos, and that's uh, the beauty of the thing. By the way, is that you don't have to care about data center provisioning the power and and everything. So it looks easy. It is not as easy, obviously, but it looks easy, and in some cases, it is very easy when it is properly done. I had a one-minute sign, so again, I'm, I'm a bit late. Um, the, the thing that I wanted to make sure is that you understand we, that we invest a lot of, of things, obviously, not only on engineering our products. We spend a lot of time making sure that you have everything necessary to make sure that we provide you the complete service around HPC clusters. And that's where we are seen as being very successful. I guess the market recognized that. Um, again, we are still, uh, I guess, market leaders for the time being. If you look at, uh, at those figures, I mean, that's nice again. We, we deliver 38% of the x86 market share, so we, of the markets for industry standard server. We, we have still 50% market share for the blade systems worldwide. And the, the share is a little bit lower, I guess, in, uh, in uh, EMEA, but it's close to 46%. So roughly one blade, every two blades, is an HP blade delivered in uh, EMEA. Okay, the modular data centers, you've understood, is one really interesting piece of uh, thinking. Just moving ahead, we know that we have a, have a lot of customers that are looking forward to implement those pods and make sure that they don't have to care anymore about the harassment of running your own data center. This is especially true for anything which is, I would say, between five and 100 racks, right? So in, in that range, it, pay, it matches perfectly. And lastly, obviously, you understood that we are playing a lot in the extreme low energy computing that, uh, that where we are investing. And I hope um, the short introductory slides that are presented on the Moonshot project will be of interest. If you have any requirements or if you would like to get in touch with us, there's a whole HP crowd in this room. Can you raise your hand so that, so that just the people would be able to uh, get in touch with you if there's anything? And I was asked before lunch also, don't lose an occasion to win an HP family server, which is right behind. You just Drop your business card, and the draw will be Wednesday, uh, Melanie.
Thursday after lunch. Okay. So with that, I guess I'm done. Right on time. Any question? With that, I guess I'm last before lunch, so we now can now call for lunch, I guess. Thank you very much.